Good morning. Oh, God. Had a good night's sleep. It is now like 9.30 in the morning. I never sleep to 9.30 in the morning. I slept today. But, um, we are going to get after this boost controller problem today. We're going to figure it out. Um, hopefully it's not the actual simple dial a boost controller if that is the case and if that is bad um then we are going to have to uh i'm gonna have to learn how to tie in the holly um with one of my outputs which like it's it's pretty much you just gotta assign a 12 volt pulse width modulated uh out of one of the out of outputs and assign it and that's pretty much it i do believe um so i make it sound easy but it's not so because well yeah well it's easy it's easy for some people and it's not for some people um i just have to learn how to do it i i was able to do it with the with the old holly system and i don't think things have changed much in that department of it. Well, it has changed, but we'll figure it out if it comes to that. But so we're going to get the diagonals right now. Um, so I'm going to pause you guys and um, we'll pick it back up in a few minutes. Okay. Hang tight. So I had my wiring for the boost controller. I had it running under the intake and it came out over here. To go over to here okay so I reached my hand under the intake to unplug it and it the connector the terminal just pulled right off like there was only one strand holding it so uh, yeah so I need to address that we gotta fix that first replug it in and see if it works um, if not, then we have to check that with a known good part and see if that, if it's, if the simple boost, if the simple boost controller is actually putting out a pulse, pulse width modulation. So that is next on our agenda. All right. So I'm going to pause you guys. Hang tight. Okay. So being the boy scout that I am, <clears throat> At work, I always do um, engines and transmissions on all makes of vehicles because I'm in a used car department. So um, I do engines, transmissions, uh, this, that. Well, they usually they all come with wiring harnesses on them. A lot of them are just locked off, cut at the at the engine and all the engine harness part is still on them that's the way the wreckers do it around here i don't i don't know why they do that but they do that especially when they when you get an ls or or, or even any of the ford products the engine harness plugs in right to the ecm that's right on the fender house it's faster and easier just to unplug it than it is to cut it it takes more effort to cut it but anyway, so usually what I do is I have a couple huge plastic boxes, like tote boxes, and a couple of the other guys that I work with do the same thing, and they, we always save those cut-off har harnesses, because you never know when you need a plugs. Like, I brought home a few key, key pieces that you can't really see them for the way the bag is, but I got a few pigtails in there they're called and I got a couple pigtails here but I scored I was smarty but malarty and this is a three wire which is okay but I got male and female here so I am going to get rid of these because I hate them so much um, we're gonna get rid of those and I'm gonna scrimp solder in these pigtails, I'm gonna have to move one of the wires because they don't line up, doesn't line up. And we are going to install it that way. And then that way it'll have a actual real deal terminal plug 
male and female on the boost controller. But right now, before I do that, I am going to cut these connectors off and I am going to connect them and make sure that that Mac valve is working with the boost controller. So, hang tight. Okay, let's see if that Mac valve is gonna work. We got nothing. Okay, so the map valve is not working. Oh, there she goes. She's working there. Oh, maybe on all the way full blast, it doesn't. It's it's just, you can't. Here, let me see. It stops at 100%. So that must, or at 94%. So that must be wide open. That's 84. That's 10%. Okay. Can you hear that? That's that clicking. Okay, so that uh, bad connection was our problem. Um, which is a good thing. But seeing that I got this apart, I am going to show you guys a hack right now where you don't need to buy one of these. And a lot of the LS swap guys, they use, you know, the plastic stock intake. Well, 90% of the time when you get your stock intake, if it's an older one or a newer one, the older one, well, hold on. What you're going to use, instead of a Mac valve, you're going to use your EVAP purge solenoid. Now, in the older intakes, they're up, they're up here in this area. They got a big fat green O-ring on them and they're stuck on top of the intake. All you're gonna do is take your boost controller, whatever you're using, simple dial boost or your Holly or whatever, and you're gonna feed your wires here and this is gonna pulse with modulate and open and put boost to where you want it. Impressed. It's better to use actually, one of these style. This yeah. is a, this is the Trailblazer SS intake because they I come on. I was releasing something on the side of the rail here. I go something, and I have to take a moment to be with myself. Okay. And the spirit of my brother. Reason being is that this has an input and an output, so you can run this off of your turbo compressor housing, and then this part to your wastegate. And find closure. Understand? That's gonna stay with me for the rest if you of my life. use the style that's in the intake here, it's just gonna take what your boost pressure is. It's off the compressor housing, obviously, but it's just I think you can do it's in the intake instead of being on the housing like I have it over here. It comes off of my compressor houser housing, goes up to the bottom of the wastegate, out of the wastegate. So you, what, you, what you would do is come out of your wastegate, go into here, out of here, to the top of your wastegate. So we're going to test this theory. I'm going to put a plug on this and we're going to try it and we're going to see how it pulses. So hang tight, okay? Okay. Let's see how that thing pulses. Right. Dial 
There she is. Pulsing like a champ. Can you hear that? Pulsing like crazy. So that would be the style one that you would want to come off your compressor housing and into the top of your gate. This is a stock GM one. Once again, one of my pigtails right there. I'm gonna blow through it, hold on. <laughs> that works good, man. It works good. All right. We're going to stick with the Mac valve for a little while because it's all plumbed in. I'm not going to deal with that right now, but I am going to put these harnesses in and get that harness ran where it's not going to get um, uh, compromised in any way. So, going to pause you. I just jumped off of the boost controller uh, project for a quick moment. Um, reason being, in a while back videos, a couple, couple videos back, you guys see me put in, uh, I put in the crankcase evacuation system. <clears throat> well, I've noticed a flaw with this system. Not with the way it works or nothing like that, but just like the, the installation part of it. Um, which there's a couple different ways that we can address it. But I feel that we're going to try my first attempt at this. What the problem is, is let me show you. See this oil that's on the ground? That wasn't there yesterday. Now I know it ain't making any crankcase presser. Um, so I was rooting around looking around in here and I noticed that these have been pushing out. Reason being, because they don't, the grommet that goes into the valve cover, it fits, but it doesn't stay in. It, 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 they've come out real easy. So what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, use GMS, gasket maker material, the gray stuff, and I'm going to put it around it here, here and here and in here, and, you know. And I cleaned out, let me get this out of the way. I cleaned out the valve cover really good. So I got that all clean with brake clean and dry. And I'm gonna push it in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one up here. I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I am gonna jump back onto the boost controller repair while that stuff is drying. That usually takes about a half hour, 45 minutes to kind of dry and then um, takes, I don't know, I don't know, probably a couple hours to completely cure. So, that's what I'm going to do now. Maybe I could zip tie them down where they'll stay put so they won't uh, get disrupted. But, alright, so I'm going to pause you. Okay, so I got those grommets RTV'd in, or GMS, whatever you want to call it, with the stuff. That, um, I use that work same stuff here uh, and I got the rear one in as well it's back there you can't really see good but take my word for it it's there um, the next <clears throat> now if that doesn't work the next thing I think I'm gonna do if this does not work is uh well there's two different things we can do we can um i'm gonna get take a whole go get some eighth inch aluminum and take a hole saw and cut out and take the center that i the seven the little disc and i'll make it the same size as that oil fill hole and we'll tig weld it in okay and then we'll drill the center of it one step. You know, uh, uh, I'll use the grommets that came with that anti-backfire system. And then I'll, if I do that, then I'll also be able to get it away from the wastegate a little bit and get it away from the booster a little bit over here. I could actually, because I'm going to be welding them shut, basically. So I could lower them closer to the valve cover. Um... 
But that's if that does not work, if this does not work. But, and then the next step, if that doesn't work, then we'll pull the grommets out and I'll TIG weld in two dash 10 fittings and we'll put dash 10s and fittings and that will definitely work. I just want a breather there. That's the only, the only thing. I just want a breather there. So I don't know how I'm gonna overcome that. Maybe come off with a tube and then put that. And I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't decided yet. But we're gonna try this first. If this does not work, then we'll go the other routes. Not today, but well, who knows? Maybe today. Today's a long day. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. 10:30. I still gotta mow my lawn and I gotta fix my new rider. So, all right, I will uh, pause you guys and we're getting back on this wiring. Okay, I'm uh, soldering up these connections right now. I feel like I've showed you guys this, this routine a few times, so that's why I haven't been recording. Um, basically using the proper solder crimp with heat shrink. And um, it is, uh, if it's good enough for airbags and airbag harnesses, if it's good enough for airbags and airbag harnesses, it's good enough for a boost controller. You know what I mean? But I'll show you guys the steps. You basically make two hooks on either wire when you strip it. And you put the two hooks together like you're linking your fingers together, you know? And then you take your crimper, your crimp, and you put it on and you crimp it down like that. Right? I have a special set of pliers that do that, which are these. Okay? Yeah five different sizes in there all right and then after you get it to that part then you put it you solder you take your saw so, your soldering iron you put it on the bottom side and you put your solder away far away from it and it, the heat will transfer across and it'll suck the solder right in throughout the whole connection it makes it solid and then as always don't forget to put your heat shrink tubing on first and then you just slide your heat shrink tubing up over top of it. Heat gun, and melts it down. It shrinks it down, and there you go, you're done. I use the stuff I usually get. It's it's marine grade. Here, let me show you. It's marine grade stuff, and there's hot glue on the inside of it. So when it melts down, it actually seals onto the wire, and it makes it wa wa weatherproof. So. All right, that's where we're at now. I'm gonna continue on. Okay, so we got it going. It's working. I uh, I put in those pigtails. They're super long. I got lots of extra here, so I'm gonna have to deal with that. But I wanted it that way just in case I need to move it to another area. You know, if I need to get it off of this side because I. I I do believe it's just too warm over here for this plastic stuff. Um, we're going to try it again, but um, there's plastic loom. So we're going to try it again, but there's our new plug. That's a weather pack plug. You don't have to worry about anything. It's sealed. Um, and as you can hear, as you can hear, it's clicking away here. So I think our next step here is to clean all this stuff up. We're gonna put the breathers back in. We're gonna see how that stuff is. Yeah, it's, it's already starting to dry. So, and then I had a, an, an epiphany. I'm looking down here at the grommet, right? And then I noticed one of the coil studs here. I might be able to make a bracket that comes up and comes over the top and just to hold that breather down. Like a, like a, like, like a thing shaped like this just to hold it down so and there's one on the back side too so um i'm just gonna see what i have for steel or whatever and see what i can come up with so i'm gonna pause you guys and then i'll we'll take it from there okay um we got our grommets rtv'd in we got our breathers back in there and the other one is in right there okay and we RTV, like I said, we uh, GMS or RTV those grommets back into the valve cover. So now <clears throat> we're going to take one more step. Let me uh, come on outside here with me. I made 
these Z bar brackets. Well, not Z, they would be like an, yeah, I guess they are a Z. But I made these two brackets here. What we're gonna do with those brackets is, I'm gonna pause you guys, so oh, I might not have to. What we're gonna do is that bracket goes from here, comes up, and goes over the top. And it's held in by this coil bolt, and it holds pressure down on the breather. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna let that coat of paint dry. Um, it's sitting in the sun, it should be about five minutes and it'll be ready to go together. So I am gonna change my hood lights, start picking up some stuff, and by the time I get this stuff all picked up, I should be able to uh, put those in. So I'm gonna pause you. Okay, we are back. I'm gonna show you those brackets and spin you around. Like I said, I basically just came off the top of this coil bolt with a bracket to go over the top of the breather and hold that breather in there so it won't it can't come out now. I did the same over there. Um, right there. Yeah. So that should cure my breather problem. We're gonna clean all this stuff up, which is pretty much all cleaned up now. And we're gonna go for a ride. We're gonna see how it uh how it's all working. Make sure the boost controller is working. I'm gonna get a coffee because I want a coffee. So I'm gonna go get a coffee, and then uh make sure everything works good. So we're gonna pause you. We'll pick it back up on the road. Okay, folks, we're out on our road test. Got some heat in it. Now we're driving. Boost controller is off. So it's only gonna make about five to six pounds of boost. As soon as this toy Honda gets out of my way. Uh, ask and I shall receive. Let's get by this plaza here because the cops like to hide in that corner.
down to right there. Okay, we are back and uh, no go. Still only has six, seven pounds of boost. That's it. It's as much as it'll make. And now it's excruciating hot. So I'm not gonna be playing with any of that. So um, I guess we have to test the wastegate, I would think, would be the next thing to do. Um, or we could pull the vacuum line off the top and just go to the, or off the bottom of the gate and just go right to the top of the gate and give it, you know, pin the, pin the, the, the wastegate shut. We can do that. Um, and that'll tell us instantly if the gate is bad or if it's, or if it's good. So I think that's what we're going to try. Um, <clears throat> hang tight. I'll be right back with you. So, um, let me explain what I did here is I pulled the vacuum line off of the compressor, went to here and went to the top of the wastegate. So all the boost should push the wastegate shut and it should make, it'll pin the turbo. So it'll make 20, 25, 30 pounds, whatever, whatever it'll allow, or whatever the back pressure will allow. Um, I did that, seven pounds of boost. So, um, and it drops. So it makes, it makes a seven and it drops down to like four. So there's obviously a problem with the wastegate itself. Right now, it's um, hotter than hell, so I'm not even gonna attempt to do anything with it. Um, so I'm gonna jump onto a different project, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll videotape and post. Um, it's nothing to do with cars, but it's mechanical. So, and we'll let this cool down. Um, I need to use the garage for the other project, but as soon as I get that done, I'll get out get this in so it'll, it should cool off in a couple hours. So, all right, I'm gonna be back with you. I'm gonna pause you, okay? Hey. Uh, so, back to the truck. I pulled the wastegate off. I got it laying here, okay? I kinda got a ghetto way of, uh, of doing this. I don't have a low res res uh, resolution regulator here, so I can't test how much pressure it can take but I can I can I can operate it see so yeah so the gate is working okay now what I found is I took a little soapy water or so a little soap I put it here and watch what happens see did you see that look at see the air leaking so I think my Mac valve is bad. So that shouldn't be leaking. It builds pressure and then it leaks by and then just goes and pushes shut. So we are going to uh, take this off and we are going to put in that EVAP purge solenoid. We're going to try that. So. I just get this mounted back on the truck. I'll get it cleaned up, get some oil off the bottom of it because of that goddamn old breather system. And um, we'll pick it up back from there in a minute, okay? I'm gonna pause you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I've tested the wastegate and there is no leaks in the actual gate itself. Um, so it is not there. I tested the Mac valve and I do believe in the last video clip I showed it, it was leaking from around the electronics area. So, um, 
that much of that big of bubbles and that much of a leak is I, I actually I moved it around as I was doing as I was blowing air at it as air in it as well and it just leaks out everywhere so that Mac valve is definitely bad and if it's not 100% bad it's 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 bad enough where it's I don't feel comfortable with it so we are going to do the hack with the purge solenoid and we're going to give it a shot we're going to see if it works it technically should work perfectly so um if it don't then i'll have to order a new mac valve and we just go on wastegate uh, uh boost for a week or so and it's not the end of the world um so i'm gonna pause you guys i'm in the middle uh, let me spin you around i was gonna do this big intricate thing here with these type of fittings and using some hard line and blah 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 and make it like a full blown install but then i'm saying to myself well maybe i should just use you know black vacuum line for now just to test it and to make sure it works and then if i want to do something elaborate and make it look sweet i'll uh, i'll put the compression fittings and the quick connects and all that stuff in here so I'm going to pause you guys and we'll pick it up in a minute. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I had to take a break there. I needed to go have dinner. Okay, now I'm just going to spin you around and show you what I've done. Okay. We have our, our GM purge, EVAP purge solenoid, which is right here. This is a valve. That's all it is. It's a MAC valve. It's the same thing as what was on here. It's pulse width modulated, so it goes. Brrr, it, 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 it lets air pass, vacuum pass from here to here, or and or boot or boost from here to here. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Doesn't matter which way the wires are coupled. It works both ways. There's positive and ground. Okay. Come out of your compressor housing. Comes over to here. Goes into the bottom of the wastegate. This is pushing your wastegate open. Okay, I'm using the wastegate as a vacuum block. So I come out of it, go over to our purge, out of our purge, back here, and to the top of the wastegate, here. So as it's making boost, I'm also put, as, as the boost is pressing this open, I'm allowing pressure to come in the top and push it shut to make more boost. And we're using a GM. Purge solenoid comes on like the two, it comes on comes on the Trailblazer SS intake. They're usually mounted right here. So if you're doing a a boosted application build and you have a junkyard motor, 90% of the time you have that right on the solenoid. You don't even have to go out and buy a per, uh, a Mac valve. You have one. Um, same thing with the older style truck intakes. It's just you're not coming off the compressor housing. You're coming off of your throttle body. They're usually mounted like here in this area on a truck intake. Let's go over here and look at this one. This is the TBSS. So, but usually it's mounted like right behind the throttle body. You can come right out of that and go to the top of your wastegate, or to the boost controller, then to the wastegate. Simple as that. So, um, like I said, I haven't tested this yet so we are i've tested the valve the valve works uh bench testing it but we are going to take it for a ride now and we're going to see if we got our boost back um i took apart the wastegate i checked it it's all working everything is working as it's supposed to so um i'm gonna pause you guys and we'll pick up in a minute hey guys <clears throat> and girls just got back from a ride Put it up to 25% on the boost controller. Seven pounds. Put it to 100% on the boost controller. Seven pounds. I'm at a loss here. It's literally got me stumped. Um, the only thing that I can think of is that maybe... The diaphragm is bad in here and it's leaking by. I didn't test the top. It's the only thing I didn't test. So that's next. Hang tight, I'll let you know. Okay, folks. 
I've been racking my brains all day. What's going on with the boost? Where did my boost go? I'm only making seven pounds. I'm only making seven pounds of boost. I'm looking for a flat. Here we go. Come with me. So I'm just doing a general inspection of the engine compartment. Looking, just looking for anything, any type of boost leak. The back of the intake manifold blew out. Right here. So, that's that. So there's our problem. The back of the intake manifold, the weld broke and it blew out. This thing runs mint. I don't understand. How can it run mint with a big hole in the... There, you can see it better here. See it? Well, there it is. There's our problem. Um, there's where all of our boost is going. It's going right out the back of the intake into the atmosphere. <laughs> all right, folks. I'm going to have to piece this video all together a little bit better. But we'll have two options. Take the intake off and weld it. That's one option. And the other option is put the plastic one back on after I just went through all that bullshit with the fuel rails and the fuel system and everything. So that is not happening. So we're going to pull this intake off and uh, and we're going to weld it as best we can. Well, we're going to weld it. It's going to be... I don't care if I have to go an inch at a time. We're doing that. So I got to clean... All of this up, you get the truck in here, so I get the intake off. That shouldn't be too, too, too bad to do. It shouldn't be that difficult to take the intake off, but um, I'm going to get the cracking. Okay, boys. So here we go. I'm going to pull this intake off. I got the, I got the truck in, so now I can shut the garage door. Um, all is good. So I am going to blast this intake off, and um, and we're going to attempt to weld the back of that intake. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can, I can do it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to admit it. I am the worst aluminum welder on the face of the planet. But um, it needs to be done. So, and it's on the back. So. I don't think you really see it all that much. So, I'll always put a sticker over it or something. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to pause you. And there she is. She cracked all the way along this weld here. All the rest of it seems to be okay. But right here. So we're gonna grind that out, and I'm going to attempt to weld that. So hang tight, and we'll uh, we'll see how it turns out. Um, like I said, I'm not the best TIG welder, aluminum TIG welder. So um, I think we should be okay. I think I should be able to handle that, but we'll see. Boys, we got it welded up back there. We're reassembling it now. I pulled a piece of carbon fiber off it, and uh, and we're uh, we're putting it back together. And we're gonna take it for a ride. All right, okay, so hang boys, tight. we're gonna um, we're gonna key it. Check for fuel leaks. And then uh, we're gonna go for a rip. We're gonna see how see if it's good. Um, it's got to be. It had a big crack in the back of the intake, so that had to have been our problem. So I got uh everything bolted back up. Everything is in. I'm just gonna nut and bolt it really quick before I go anywhere, just to double check it. 
because I don't want to break down and have to get towed home or some shit or walk. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to pause you and we'll pick it back up in the truck. Okay, boys, we're in the truck. I don't know what the wind noise is going to be like, but I'm just taking it easy. I'm in my neighborhood area, so um, everything seems to be fine. Truck's running good now. Well, it was running good before. That was the whole thing that threw me off, is that it was running good, even with a big crack in the back of the intake. It was still running good. So, we're gonna get up a ways here, and then we are going to, uh, we're gonna see how she performs, see if she makes boost now, which she should. This should still be wasting. Alright, that's 15 pounds right there, and I'm on the wastegate spring. Okay, so I might have to respring the gate now. <laughs> oh! What the fuck? Alright, anyway. Oh, cop. That felt really good. Damn, I don't want to get pulled over. I just passed the cop going like 50. Uh, well, he didn't pull out, so. All good. We're all good, I think. I hope. That was 15 pounds of boost on the wastegate spring. Holy shit. Alright, let's get down here. Oh boy, I think I can't pull out. Shit. Oh well, if I get pulled over, I get pulled over.
All right, boys. Ah. Well, let me turn this down. We got all the boost. It's making like 15 pounds on the spring now. So I'm going to have to respring that. Bring home a, a low re, uh, resolution uh, regulator. I have one at work. I'll bring it at home. And we will uh, we will check that. Um, that's number one. Number two. Jesus, I can't believe I'm actually going to say this. But I'm 90% sure that it pushed the rear main seal out of it. I don't know how... There's a ton of oil under the truck. I don't know where it came from. I'm going to have to get it up in the air and get underneath there and inspect it. But the last time I had that much oil underneath the truck, the rear main seal pushed out. I have no idea why, but... Um, I'm going to have to look into that a little deeper. Uh, this is the second time this has happened to me. First time it happened with the 6 liter. Um, but the first time was self-inflicted. It was my fault. I, did, I screwed that one up. But um, I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to get underneath there and make sure that that is the problem. But... So there's where we are now. All the boost is fixed, but now we got a wicked oil leak. Oh my God, the life of owning a race car. <laughs> it keeps me on my toes. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to cut all... I, I probably got 20 different takes of different videos today of me screwing with this thing. I'm going to slim it all down to, to what we got here. So, all right, going to see you guys tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Have a good one.